Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in today's video using Stellaris, we're going to talk about an unusual new discovery that was made on October 2016 that suggests that there is quite a lot of stars out there that seem to produce signals suggesting that there is possibly aliens. We're going to talk about this in more detail using Stellaris, and you're going to learn something new using video games. Welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So this is actually from one of my previous games using Stellaris where I tried to basically conquer the universe but didn't succeed very much because it was my f one of my first uh, times playing. But we're actually going to start a new game just because this is essentially where we are at right now. We're going to pick the humans and we're going to go ahead and start a game uh, right here on our own planet Earth with the moon right there. Now. This is where we are right now technologically, this is what it kind of looks like. In a sense, this is essentially us. We might not have an ability to build spaceships yet, but we're getting there um, quite, quite uh, quickly. Uh, we definitely are already planning several missions to other asteroids, and we have a mission that is being planned to, to go to Mars and possibly even colonize it, including colonization of the Moon. So this is not far off in terms of, uh, you know, actual scientific discoveries as of now. But um, if you were to actually click M here, you would realize that there's a lot of other stars out there and many of these stars, if you've ever played Stellaris, many of these stars will actually contain other civilizations, some of them more advanced than yours and some of them might actually be very, very hostile to toward you and some of them might be really, really friendly. This game is actually really awesome at recreating all of this because a lot of it is usually um, procedurally generated, so you never know who you're going to bump with into and you never know if the war is coming or if you're in you will end up making a new friend. Now, why are we talking about this? Well, this is why. On October 2016, uh, scientists uh, discovered that a few signals that were detected over the last few years from something like 234 stars out of approximately 2.5 million stars that we actually looked at seem to have a very, very, very unusual signal coming from them. As a matter of fact, they've uh, used a very similar technique that was used previously in another paper uh, back in 2012, where a similar sort of approach was used to analyze the signals from various galaxies to discover if there were certain types of black holes around them. And in that paper, this person actually suggested that, you know, if ever there's aliens, uh, if, there, if ever there's actually something that is trying to send a signal to us, it would be essentially... A very specific type of signal, a very unique sort of uh, signal that would stand out from among other frequencies. And uh, unfortunately, or unusually, this is exactly what has been detected in uh, this new study. And so this new analysis of these strange, unusual frequency modulations appears to only uh, have these unusual signals around 234 stars. Um, they've actually analyzed these stars using various parameters and they've deconstructed them using something called... Fourier spectrum analysis, which you can kind of see on the screen right now, this is basically um, an animation that represents how this actually works. Um, and this analysis usually deconstructs a frequency into its uh, original frequencies, and then it shows you what's happening, what's going on, what's causing what, and uh, where the frequencies stand out, and so on. Now, we're currently basically just analyzing our own solar system, trying to discover if there's anything unusual about it. We're going to accelerate time here and maybe uh, discover something really cool about it. Uh, but for now though, I'm actually just going to start constructing various uh, ships and various research vessels or science vessels that can actually go out there and explore the solar system nearby because we're trying to find an alien life near us. And while we're basically waiting for one more ship to, uh, to be constructed and while we're waiting for the science ship to finish... Oh, that was fast. Uh, to essentially finish scanning our own system. Now, well, let's, let's just send this ship to the nearby system and let's start with maybe the closest system to us, which is, of course, Alpha Centauri. We're going to uh, go right here and we're going to ask the ship to enter orbit around the system and we're going to scan Alpha Centauri, hopefully finding something interesting here. All right, so we are in the new system of Alpha Centauri. I don't really know how we got here so fast, but possibly some sort of a technological uh, discovery that our own human race doesn't yet have. Specifically here, we're talking about faster than life uh, travel. Now, I actually have to assign one of the scientists here uh, so that um, we can basically... Oh, uh, here we go. We can basically go ahead and start scanning the system because otherwise this ship will kind of be basically useless. It needs to have a scientist to be able to scan things. We're going to start with the star and progress into the next system afterwards. And then while we're actually scanning everything here, uh, let's continue talking about this unusual discovery. So... 
How did they actually analyze these frequencies? Oh, look at that. We have a of an alien vessel on Alpha Centauri. The strange objects have been flagged as snarks. Uh, we don't really know anything about them, but we're going to go ahead and maybe try to interact with these enigmatic spacefarers. These are, I believe these are also known as basically space monsters, which can basically be very friendly or potentially be very, very dangerous. And it's gone. It disappeared from existence and moved somewhere else. And in the meanwhile, we're going to go ahead and also explore the Bernard Star, which is uh, one of the closest stars to our um, solar system. I've talked about these closest stars in one of the previous videos. And anyway, so let's keep uh, exploring. This is, of course, uh, a red dwarf star, which is why it's so red and so beautiful. Actually, even more beautiful than our own sun in some, some way. Now, the only goal I have in this particular playthrough is to actually just discover alien life, because this is really what this video is all about. We're going to try to discover alien life here and try to find out um, if there are aliens out there. Maybe this is one of those games where there are totally no aliens, although that's kind of impossible. Alien Murrow discovered. Look at that. We've discovered an unusual uh, carving on the rock in Barnard Star, which is very, very fascinating. And we're going to maybe see... Okay, we can't really research this yet, because... Why? Because we don't have a scientist that has enough skill. And that's okay. Anyway, so let's uh, take our scientists and finish exploring the system. Alright, back to the actual research. So, the scientists that were studying these uh, particular millions of stars discovered that 234 of them had very, very, very unusual uh, frequency um, in a very specific region that was actually predicted in the paper uh, back in 2012, suggesting that maybe if there was aliens out there, they would probably use this type of um, uh, communication, this type of uh, frequency to try to basically um, interact with one another or contact other species and so on. And un unusually, those 234 stars out of 2.5 million stars seem seems to have actually had this unusual um, signal uh, predicted in a previous publication and basically uh, kind of agreeing with the hypothesis uh, from another scientist back in 2012. And another thing is that uh, all of these signals were only found uh, around very, very specific stars. Specifically, we're talking about a very small fraction of stars, um, most of them main sequence stars, uh, very similar to our own um, sun. And what's even more unusual is that it was a very, very narrow spectral range, basically a very specific frequency, as of essentially um, an alien species communicating in, in a very specific frequency with maybe other alien species. But now, interestingly, the actual uh, title of the paper has nothing to do with, uh, with aliens. Uh, the paper is called um, Discovery of Peculiar Periodic Spectral Modulations in a Small Fraction of Solar uh, Type Stars. In other words, what it's saying is that uh, it's... Uh, it was looking for uh, very unusual patterns of uh, different stars and what it discovered is these really unusual unexplained phenomena for many different stars, like for example this star or maybe this star or, or this star right here, that seem to have been producing uh, signals that would not really be explained in any other way. Would, they could not be explained in terms of errors, they could not be explained in terms of any known phenomena and the only thing that they could actually not rule out and uh, essentially the only explanation that they kind of had was well maybe just maybe this is actually an extraterrestrial intelligence that's trying to basically communicate with each other with one another or possibly even reach out to other um, ETIs or extraterrestrial intelligences out there. But what's even more interesting is that this is an actual science paper, so um, it's very, very clear that the scientists do not try to uh, make an assumption that this is aliens. They're actually asking for help, they're asking for further studies, they're asking for people to try to um, reanalyze their data and maybe find some mistakes, because they don't want to claim that this is aliens, they want to find out what it actually is. Now here's actually an example of what they've detected. Uh, the graph that you see right here has a very sort of a typical uh, Fourier breakout or Fourier analysis of different spectra. And here you can see around 800 is a very unusual spike of very uh, sort of high amplitude. In other words, very strong signal coming in that particular uh, frequency that is not really explained by anything that we know about those stars. We don't really know what's happening there. We don't really know why it appears that way. And what should I pick? Deflectors. And um, unusually, uh, if you actually look at the signal in more detail, or all of those 234 signals, they all seem to have these. They all seem to have this really strong signal that is much, much stronger than any noise that uh, you can potentially have in these uh, particular signals or any kind of sort of star-like phenomena that might be um, able to explain what's going on here. 
Now, the other thing that's very unusual about this finding is that only about 1 in 10,000 of uh, all of these stars essentially have this signal, and very, very specific stars and very, very specific region of frequency. But of course, it's too early to actually attribute these to aliens. As a matter of fact, we can't just uh, claim that this is aliens, just like uh, someone did from Russia back in August of 2016, when they said, oh, we found aliens. Uh, it's a signal that seems to be very unusually strong, and it's probably coming from the star right here. Turns out it wasn't at all. Th this is a video I made a few months ago. It turns out it was actually just a Russian satellite that nobody knew about because it was a secret military satellite. But in this case, we've detected 234 of these using data from um, an analysis known as... SDSS survey, which basically mapped out our galaxy in three dimensions and used 2.5 million stars to create a very uh, unusual and beautiful map of our own nearby neighborhood. And so essentially using uh, this map and using these different stars, they were able to discover these various signals that might have been actually generated by extraterrestrial intelligence. Now, I haven't really discovered any ETI yet, but it seems like there's an unusual signal coming from that direction right there. And there's also a ship there that might be an ETI. So let's actually maybe take one of our service ships or science ships and see if we can maybe just maybe make our first contact with this unusual blue civilization that seems to be right here. We can't really do anything yet until we build an outpost nearby, but we're gonna do that right now and expand our borders and maybe make our first contact with an alien ETI in Stellaris. Now, the paper that I'm talking about is actually available in the description below. You can obviously read it by yourself and you can uh, check out what the scientists are saying about this. And I'm running out of money. That's not good. We'll figure this out later. Most important thing right now is to make friends. Have we actually made contact yet? Uh, we apparently have. And this is the yelling so we've discovered. Look at that. Let's check them out. Let's communicate. Yes, that to you too. Hello, I'm offering you a trade deal. Please accept it. You cannot. Okay, cool. Uh, they don't want to be friends. Maybe I can maybe kind of ask him for something else? Apparently, I cannot. They seem to be very unfriendly toward us. They, I don't know why, but they seem to not like us very much. They're uh, viewing us with suspicion and mistrust. We probably should do the same. Very smart move to do. Speaking of, um, Stephen Hawking has actually several, uh, stated several times that uh, he's very worried about, uh, about us discovering aliens because it's very likely that they're going to be hostile and possibly eliminate us and or enslave us completely. True story. So we better be careful about all this. But anyway, I'm going to try to actually uh, see if I can maybe explore some of their systems, which I think I already did, actually. Yeah, I cannot explore this one. Uh, but we've definitely discovered our first alien species. Now, the paper, yeah, the, the paper that I posted in the description below talks about some other really cool ideas, including the fact that... Um, well, looking at the actual regular spectrum of these stars, you won't really see anything different about them. Looking at the Fourier spectrum analysis, which basically means that you broke down all of the signal into its uh, constituent frequencies, uh, or basically basic frequencies that are uh, creating this type of signal, you would see that um, each one of those 234 stars has this unusual, very strong signal in a very specific frequency. But at the same time, uh, it also kind of asks a question. So why would the aliens even send these signals to, uh, you know, to our star, to other stars? Um, and of course, why would they even bother doing all this? Uh, first of all, it requires a lot of energy. It requires a very, very highly advanced civilization with a lot of uh, technology that we currently don't have. And at the same time, the aliens might even know about these Fourier transformations and the fact that other alien species might be able to detect them uh, in the same way that we detect them right now. And of course, uh, those aliens might also be aware that other civilizations, like for example this one right here, United Nations of Earth, uh, might actually have the technology needed to, uh, to detect these signals. So why do that? Why send these signals to other stars? And I guess there's no real answer to it, because these scientists do not give you an answer, but the possibility is there. Maybe these aliens actually are trying to contact other civilizations, or maybe they're actually talking to each other, uh, you, you know, different stars may have different species from the same type of uh, empire or something. Very similar to how it is in this game. And they're just sending signals to each other and we kind of intercepted some of them. Maybe that's what's happening, maybe not. But the fact remains the same. The fact is that only a small fraction of these stars seem to have this signal. Only stars very similar to our own sun. And also only signals of a very specific frequency seem to be coming from those stars and only visible if you use this Fourier analysis and those signals are very very strong we don't have any other explanation for what those signals are except of course maybe it's just an error in our analysis but that's why these scientists ask for help from other scientific community to try to basically analyze them again use other telescopes and see if they actually detect these signals as well but anyway 
Now that we've actually discovered our first uh, alien civilization in Stellaris, we can maybe stop this video here. And in one of the future videos, maybe we'll have a playthrough of this game as well, because it's one of my favorite strategy games by Paradox Interactive. But the important thing about this particular video and the important message here is that so far this paper from 2016 is the strongest sort of uh, proof we have of potentially hundreds and hundreds of different alien civilizations living out there, communicating with one another and possibly sending signals to other stars. Until we disprove these signals or until we find another explanation to them, we don't really have a better explanation. We don't really know what's going on, what, why those frequencies are so strong and why they're basically only around certain types of stars very similar to our own sun, why they're uh, sort of only in those specific frequencies and why uh, those particular stars out of 2.5 million stars we analyzed have them. As a matter of fact, it's, it seems that only 1 in 10,000 stars have those signals and only stars that we would maybe consider colonizing ourselves. But until we can observe this data with other telescopes and until we can reanalyze it again, nothing is certain. We don't really know if this was uh, mistaken. We won't know until sometime in the future when someone else writes a follow-up paper and discusses those various stars uh, using uh, their own data analysis. So until then, we can't really say that this is aliens. We can only speculate and we can only dream and possibly speculate and basically play games like Stellaris, hoping that aliens are out there and that they're actually friendly and not as unfriendly as these guys that I just covered, whoever they are, whatever their name is, they still do not really like us. But I like you so much, you look so cute. Anyway, so that's all I wanted to talk about in this video. I wanted to kind of discuss this paper in a little bit um, of detail just to give you um, a sort of a gist of, of what this paper is all about. You can read it yourself in the, the link in the description below and do let me know in the comments below what do you guys think? Do you actually think it's aliens? Do you have any other explanations for what those signals might be and why we actually have them around those 234 specific stars around our um, own solar system and uh, what what could it be? What could those signals be? Is there any other rational explanation? We'll talk about this idea in more detail when more papers are released, but for now we're going to stop this video here and do check out Stellaris, it's an awesome awesome game, it's uh, one of the best sort of space exploration, space strategy games out there, gives you this sort of wonder and awe of different alien species you can potentially meet out there because all of them are procedurally generated, and one day we're going to play through this game and discuss sciences and space in more detail. Thank you for watching guys, I'll see you in the next video, game you later, and as always, bye bye. And I'm going to go right here and start creating a lot of uh, corvettes because it's time for us to attack those aliens and destroy their civilization because that's what humanity is all about, right? We're all about fighting and destruction. Or maybe I'll be the peaceful human. Maybe I'll just go ahead and cancel all of these different uh, things that I just tried to construct and instead focus on friendliness, uh, diplomacy and cooperation with other aliens. You know what? Yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to be the friendly one. I'll see you guys in the next video. Please subscribe, share this video, support us on Patreon, and game you later. Bye-bye.